Okay, great. So you have introduced the topic. So basically there are two uh, different uh, land use change practices. One is extensification from uh, cropland to grassland and another one is uh, afforestation on soil or what is the effect on soil organic carbon stock in Finland. And uh, this uh, study is of course uh, in the background that uh, also Jana has showed this uh, figure previously. Thank you. That uh, Finland aims to be carbon neutral by uh, 2035. And uh, at the moment, the emissions, uh, the net emission is about 30 million ton CO2 equivalent. In future, uh, this may be some bar, it's a little bit pessimistic, but let's just uh, keep it for illustration. So uh, the question uh, in this presentation is, can we use mineral soil farm plant for afforestation and for extensification to become as a country carbon neutral? So we will increase this bar for becoming uh, increasing uh, net sink. Unfortunately, the answer is no. And if you want to stay, uh, if you want to find out, then stay with me. So we have this uh, article published uh, that is presenting uh, how much, for example, afforestation will gain in total. So if we have in carbon gain into, in this case, birch forest and plus biomass plus soil, then it will be after 30 years, there is some delay before, some between 1.6 to 2.4 megagram carbon per hectare per year. So this is comparable to personal emissions and it's great for offsetting personal emissions if this could be the way that someone of us want to compensate our emissions, then go ahead or yeah, I recommend. So how we came up with this with this number? So we quantified effects of mineral soil farmland land use change, as I mentioned, on soil organic carbon stock in Finland in three regions, and we used agricultural uh, biomass statistics, and then uh, what is the harvest residues and litter input, and how much it comes to the soil, and we use dynamic model to uh, run the changes in the soil and similar we did for the forest, but the forest biomass uh, growth comes from another forest model and uh, it's similar residuals comes to the soil. We considered uh, different scenarios, so for in addition to afforestation and extensification, we considered uh, afforestation with spruce or birch or soil with high or medium soil fertility. And then we also consider the regional differences in relation to climate and we validated our result with uh, available data on soil carbon stocks or soil carbon change. These are the experiments of deforestation of afforestation, but here only afforestation is relevant. Also, as uh, we have seen from Pilio's presentation before, we used uh, the tool Pelto Optimi to find uh, what uh, is a land use change, feasible land use change area? What are the, um, in fact, this is like it identifying the farms that could be like feasible for land use change. And if we come, if we go with the current trend, which is now like 500 hectares per year, in 10 years it's 5,000 hectares. But uh, according to National Forest Inventory, there is up to uh, 250,000 hectares that are now abandoned grasslands. So this have also potential for afforestation. So we can consider it as some kind of like potential maximum. It, we will find out that it's not, uh, we cannot go as far, but this is like the, for minerals, so this is the, the upper maximum. So when we look um, on business as usual, like this is so carbon change in megagrams uh, carbon per hectare. So this figure is a little bit complicated, but uh, what uh, it shows that it's a change in soil carbon over time after afforestation, this uh, dotted red line, and then uh, 
this black line, it shows how much we are losing through agriculture annually. Uh, sorry, this is the the oh, now I lost. OK, this is the lowest one. And then this will be the different scenarios of uh, of extensification. So there is some reduction of uh, of the loss and the change will be the gain like future gain. We will conserve this carbon in the soil if we make uh, different management and this way we will not emit and this re reduce uh, emissions. So this is quite clear for extensification, which is uh, quite easy. It's just change uh, from cropland to grassland that is extensively managed, not uh, much biomass is removed. But if we do afforestation, then it's more complicated. And you see that the values are are changing a lot. And for example, these uh, dots with uh, arrow bars, these are the measurements of afforestation. And you can see that at the beginning, the, the, there is huge uncertainty what happens if we are gaining carbon after afforestation or losing. And similarly, the models also show a delay in the soil accumulation and it's also quite takes quite long and this this peaks uh, it's like suddenly so carbon goes up when there is uh, management like thinning in the forest and a lot of carbons come to the soil from this thinning and then it's decomposing and uh, very after a very long period uh, this uh, uh, soil in case of spruce starts to gain carbon uh, in case of birch, there is a little bit different allocation. Uh, more carbon goes to fine roots. So the and also there is a different quality of uh, carbon. So the soil starts to start to gain carbon earlier, but still it's not uh, too much. It, but if we then uh, consider the change between uh, how much we actually gain, because here we lose a lot here we are losing a lot but here we are already coming to to some gain and we, if we consider this this change between these two then we are are positive unless uh, like those those are all the positive values uh, so the afforestation or extensification is almost always a better option than uh, for so for mitigating uh, the emissions than uh, continuing business as usual. Except uh, there is this one case when we can call it some kind of brute afforestation that uh, we do afforestation on the bare fallow and uh, there is only seedlings growing, but not uh, other vegetation. But this is a little bit unrealistic, but it's good for uh, for bearing in mind that if we don't have enough vegetation growing on a forest, uh, like immediately afforested land, then we will be losing carbon even with afforestation. So, but if we consider this more positive uh, impact of uh, land use change, then we will be gaining carbon at some rate to the soil, and then uh, it's, we will be also gaining carbon with some rate uh, to the soil plus biomass. and. Uh, here we can see that there is some delay between the uh, mostly caused by the soil and plus uh, growth of this biomass. So it takes about 30 years until the stand grows to such dimensions that it's more or less uh, in future stays in the stable level. This, uh, this is the management of thinning, so that is nothing to be scared of, but it's more or less stable around two megagrams per hectare per year. So that is really good uh, um, carbon gain of of the forest per hectare. And if we if we oh, sorry, All right, I need to see what time. Uh, and if we consider like what uh, is our potential for Finland and for offsetting, then uh, we can consider the case when we have like ten years change. See that there is. Uh, uh, positive values are OK for immediately for extensification, even for 10 years. But uh, after after a longer period, this uh, extensification benefit uh, on the country level uh, 
diminish or goes a little bit lower. And then uh, on the other hand, uh, for example, for the soil here, the benefit in after 10 years uh, is very low, even uh, negative. But uh, if we consider a total carbon, then, then it's better. But the best uh, scenario here will be um, like considering, OK, what is the the total carbon according to carbon gain, according to present afforestation um, rate, which is uh, is uh, aims to afforest like 5000 hectares uh, in next 10 years. So in that case, we will be gaining some 10 almost 11 gigagrams carbon per year. But if we can compare it to um, annual emissions, Finnish national emissions, which is at, in 2018, it was 46, but this is uh, not minus uh, land uh, sink. So we, we, minus land sink, this will be like 330. So, but without minus, uh, Anyway, 46 or 30 is also a comparable number. So if we have 46, uh, that translates to 46 teragram CO2, which uh, con converting to carbon, it's uh, by something by 3.6. Uh, dividing, uh, we will get 12.6 teragram carbon. So this is teragram. It means uh, this value is in gigagram. So it's like uh, 0, 0.0 teragram, so that is 0, 0.0 percent. How, how about uh, if we then uh, consider this maximum potential, like upper upper limit? Then those this is like 250 hectares that, in most optimistic scenario, could be afforested. This will give us 500 gigagrams carbon, which is 0, 0.5 teragrams, and that could be like 4 percent. So we could think that uh, for offsetting national emissions, afforestation on uh, on um, mineral soil is is not enough action, and uh, also we could we have to consider that uh, 10 to 20 years the effect is only marginal of afforestation, and uh, so but for uh, offsetting personal emissions, this is a great tool, and. Uh, at the moment, uh, current subsidies encourage to continue agricultural use. Therefore, uh, only set aside fear are highly potential targets for afforestation. And uh, we could estimate uh, with more optimistic uh, support for farmers, we could estimate, estimate uh, in next 10 years afforestation somewhere between 10, uh, more realistically between 10 and 30,000 hectares. And now I have a little bit time left and uh, we have also two minutes. Made, uh, OK, great. Yeah, that, that should be enough. So we have economy. We have made economic analysis of uh, of afforestation. So uh, with afforestation, we have to also consider what could be effect of subsidized in case there will be so to make uh, this uh, management profitable. And for that, we calculate net present value of agriculture and forestry with carbon subsidized, and we assume steady state. And uh, carbon uh, simulations were used for the study just presented, and we have varied uh, interest rate and cost of afforestation. And we consider three types of farms, cereals with low income, cereals with good income, and dairy farms with extremely good income. So for this, uh, finding out uh, uh, economic optimization between afforestation and agriculture, uh, we we use an equation. Okay. We we use uh, an equation based on cost of afforestation, and uh, carbon price and forest income. To solve these equations, we use break-even planes for the variable interest rate, which is this R, or afforestation cost. So uh, in this case of variable interest rate, we fix planting cost to 1,500 hectares. And uh, here 
and in this case of afforestation cost, we fix uh, interest rate to 3%. And everything that uh, is on the on the flat plane, uh, afforestation is as good as uh, as agriculture. But if it goes uh, uh, like this uh, plane that is uh, sliding, sloping, then uh, you see that like if interest rate is growing here, then you have to subsidize more and more carbon. And in case of uh, of afforestation, is uh, it's a similar uh, similar case. So if uh, afforestation cost uh, is low, then you can uh, compete with afforestation uh, for more profitable farms. But uh, if afforestation uh, cost grows, then it's not uh, so profitable later on. And if we summarize it uh, into the table, then mostly for these low and high uh, cereal farms, we could see that there is either no uh, need to subsidize or there is relatively lower subsidize needed. But in case of dairy farms, they are really huge, like unrealistic. Thank you.